Hello YouTube, you TNA show Pokemon Blue Play, part 52. In the last part YouTube, me and Adam talked about motion controls and I sort of ruined my argument even more. In this part I'm going to try and better myself and it might even be Adam's turn soon. Off we go. In the, in the meantime, whilst on our way back to our little wherever the hell we were, uh, we found this douche. Adam, Pokemon Roll Call piece of Route 14. Yeah, we're actually on Route 14 now, so... Uh... We well, didn't do his last part because I was too busy talking about motion control and trying to um, make them sound good. I'd also like to point out that he promised me bikini girls on this route. <laughs> I have not seen bikini girls on this route. Okay, I I admit that I was wrong. The bikini girls don't come until we get to uh, Cinnabar Island and Seafoam Island. So all you he filled me with false hope. So all the people want bikini girls. You have to wait a few more parts. I'm sorry! Anyway... Pokemon Roll Call, please! <laughs> routes 14 and 15. You get a Pidgey, very common in all three versions. Pidgeotto, rare in all three versions. Oddish, very common in red and yellow. Gloom, common in red and yellow. Venonat, common in red, blue and yellow. Uh, Venomoth, rare in yellow. A Bellsprout, very common in blue and yellow. Weeping Bell, common in blue and yellow. And a Ditto, common in all three versions. So, so it's basically the same as Route 12. More or less, but just nothing and in the Route water. 13. Nothing in the water. Alright. Probably because there isn't any water. Even though there's fishermen there. Ooh, Polly's there in a new movie here, YouTube. Drill Peck. Very powerful movie. I'm gonna forget the old fashioned peck and learn the ability to drill peck. Actually, no, squash that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna forget Fury Attack because I don't use it anymore. Your choice, mate. Drill Pit, very good move, definitely worth getting. It is godlike. It's not as powerful as Horn Drill, but Drill Pit's worth a damn because it actually hits the damn thing. Have we been to Fuchsia City yet, or is that where we're going? We're going. Right. So, anyway, there's no Pokemon roll calls until we get there. The next thing I've got to worry about is uh, the gym. Also, the Safari Zone. There'll be right. plenty of roll calls in there, mate. That place is filled with Pokemon. We haven't seen anything about the Safari Zone yet. That you two. I want to talk about more like motion controls here. <laughs> um, he's, re he's trying desperately to redeem himself with this. The, the, in the last part, I um, talked about um, the shield shoving in Zelda and how if you learned the way the game liked you to do it, it could be, um, it could be good. I also talked about how it was kind of good in a Warrior Land Shade Dimension because tilting the remote worked. Then we sort of talked about how... Tilting the remote in Warrior Land to, to balance a, 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 a unicycle or something like that, it makes sense. Mm. But it's still shite. Mm. There's still nothing that you know a couple of shoulder buttons can't accomplish. I know. Uh, anyway, and then I also talked about the um, Sega's failure which with motion controls, which was um, Sega Secret Rings. You also mentioned the Saturn for some reason. What? You also mentioned the Saturn for some reason. Yeah, because the Saturn was one of Sega's basic failures as far as consoles are concerned. It's there aren't many other consoles where there's a game playable where you where you play a prepubescent uh, bunny girl whacking robots with hammers. Keo Flying Squadron, I believe it was called. Oh. I've never played it. I... I've never seen it. I've Ever. I don't even know if it was released in this country, but the, just the concept. Let me finish. I've heard that uh, Saturn had some good games, but apparently in America it tanked. It, it failed miserably. It wasn't well received, and it did well in Japan, but in America and the UK it was basically molested and annihilated by the N64. I have never played one. I, I have only ever seen one in a shop window... Uh, well, second, second hand stores, um, Game Station, I think it was. But uh, yeah, I've got no experience with the Saturn at all. Hey, as I was saying, I just know that one of the, one of the games involved a prepubescent um, Sonic and the Secret Rings. Bunny as girl. As far as motion control games is concerned, if you can play it for about a month constantly, uh, if you stick at it, you can adjust yourself to its controls. You can eventually have some fun with it. Or alternatively, use a controller, you can use it straight away. But, um. It's one of those games you have to persevere with the controls in order to enjoy it. 
and it's not always fun learning to do that sort of thing. That's why I've only ever no, it isn't ever. That's why I've only ever beaten the game once, and I haven't gone back to it since. Although I do have a lot of gold medals on that game. Joy. So once you learn how to do it, you can sort of be show off to your friends and show how good you are. Bragging rights, basically, which are pointless. Um. Now, as for um, Strike the Black Knight, Strike the Black Knight, it's based. Yes, it has motion controls, but the only motion control is your sword. It's a, basically they they took the game and thought, right, we'll we'll keep the game simple. Motion controls for your sword and everything else, buttons. So even uh, Sega has decided to scrap motion control. I have to say, good idea, Sega. Although the sword was worse than in Zelda, you could literally go through the, through the game going, putting your hand there, putting the remote through it, and just look like a pendulum. I'm going, and then just making your remote sort of flick between your two fingers and be a pendulum. You mean a metronome? Yeah, metronome. Right. You know, the motion control was that sensitive, you could sit through the entire game and do that. Just sort of rock it back and forth? Yeah. This is getting way too sexual. <laughs> so, Sorry, so the, the, the promise of Bikini Girls its just thrown me. So I have, I have a lot of pent-up libido energy waiting to escape <laughs> somewhere. I like... Um, and I'm not being I, weird, honest. I kind of like Sonic and the Black Knight better than Secret Rings, because the controls are a lot better. Which is basically saying you like a broken nose and the kick in the bollocks. <laughs> but... Personally, I enjoyed um, Secret Rings a lot more, but I didn't enjoy the controls a lot more. If that makes that any sense to you at all, Secret Rings was longer and therefore a better game, but um, that night was shorter, but it had better controls. You know, if they sort of like control combined Black Knight with Secret Rings, it, you could probably make the, a decent Sonic game out of that, as long as you sort of didn't put motion controls in. <laughs> if you didn't put motion controls you're supposed to be arguing for them, you nugget! I'm trying here. Um, then came Strike Unleashed. Well, I have oh, bloody that. hell. Strike Unleashed with motion controls is shit. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you just admit that motion controls are bad? Let me finish. <laughs> Let me finish. I think I to tell you why they were shit. He's desperately clinging to any, any available straw he can find. <laughs> Even if it's non-related. <laughs> so I played Sonic Unleashed for an hour with motion controls. And when you're playing as um, Sonic himself, they were fine. But the Werehog, they were unbearable. You had to move your left hand to punch with the left hand. You had to move the right hand, the, with the right hand to punch with the right hand. It's basically like playing Wii Sports Boxing with a Werehog whilst moving around. And if you wanted to, t if you wanted to climb a giant pole or a tree, you have to go. You have to like, you have to look like you. And I, I what the hell? What the hell is that, Dan? You have to do this. Yeah, you can't see that, mate. <laughs> uh, you had to sort of um, put your hands in it upwards and downwards with sort of motion. It wasn't very fun. <laughs> I think we get the general idea. If anyone who's played it will understand. So when I played Sonic Unleashed for the Wii, I instantly unplugged the Wii remote and looked at the back of the box and said, GameCube controller, got it out from my bed and plugged that in and went, ah, fun. So rather than arguing for motion controller, he just basically, he just quite literally said that that game is better without it. Yeah. Sega doesn't really do very well with motion controls. The only no one does! The only time motion controls are being done right by Sega is in House of the Dead 2 and 3 and House of the Dead Overkill. Because it's just a simple point. Which are rail shooters. Which, which you don't need motion controls for anyway. Um, what... So... Yeah, but if... On the Wii... The original rail shooters for the console ha... You, you, you played... Uh, you, you just controlled a little crosshairs that floated up and down the screen. If it going too slow, you entered the options and sped it up. Hmm. Yeah, you, you spend, when it hovered over something you want to shoot, you press one of the buttons, it shot. You, you press the cursor, you spin up the cursor. Now, the only problem I have with speed of a cursor is this. When I use the mouse, I have to set the mouse speed down to quite s slow, because if, I, if it moves too fast, I can't use the mouse properly. 
And you're not the only one with that, mate. My 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 dad uses uses a mouse. That, it, I don't know. You have to, you have to orbit the planet to to make it move about three centimeters to the left. Anyway, so so when you uh, so when I feel like a, um, a rail shoot with a cursor, I always set the um, cursor to the standard speed because I don't like move my cursor too fast because like I st I tend to lose it. It tends to go off the screen. I miss the and try to shoot. <laughs> But when I'm playing like a rail shooter on a Nintendo Wii, I can just point my road and die. It makes me look like as if I'm good at this sort of thing. <laughs> the trouble is, that's all the Wii Remote Remote is good for. Okay, factoring in how many broken eyeballs that people have battered each other senseless with with it, <laughs> this much control, how many times people have, I don't know, forgot to tie the, la the lanyard around the round the wrist and smashed in their brand new t TV oh. by trying to bowl. Well, can I just say one thing here? Okay, you're a bunch of dickheads for not pr using the equipment right. One, you're an idiot for not reading the, the help the manual. Because a lot of people these days, when they buy a new game... Or they stick it in and, and then wonder why they can't play it. Exactly. What the fuck do you think that book's for, dipshit? No offence to um, people who do this, but... No, all offence to people who do this. The manual's there for a fucking reason. No, can I finish? In-game tutorials. Yes, they're good, but... No, they're boring, tedious, and unimmersive. Can I finish? In-game tutorials. Yes, they're good, but they'll never replace the manual. Sorry. Nothing breaks the experience than having one of your characters turn, turn around. Right, we need... Right, you need to... You need to run down this hole. You do that by pressing X. Eh? Ra you know, rather breaking the fourth wall. Yeah, unnecessarily breaking the fourth wall for a tutorial. Dude, if you read the friggin' manual, you'd know how to play the friggin' game. So that's why it's there. Most of the people who are. Uh... Oh, by, by the way, do, before he goes any further, if you are one of these people who, when you are, when you have um, a game, you take the manual and throw it away, do yourself a favor. Do yourself, me. David, and the rest of humanity a favour, go die in a ditch and drown in your own shit. Because we fucking hate you. Because every time I go to the shop and, and try and buy a game that has a manual missing, I feel like going up to the guy who sold the game and giving him the world's biggest lecture. With knives. <laughs> <laughs> a lecture with knives. Okay. Also with words. So you prick, do not throw the manual away. <laughs> okay, I can I can understand throwing the, the case. Maybe maybe the case breaks or something. You're having to improvise. You know, you got an old VCR case. You throw you throw on, you put the game disc in a, one of those little plastic sheets and throw throw it in there. I can I can live with that. But the manual is a thing that you need to. Um, the manual keep. is essential for playing the game. That's why we have them. Okay, there are some games that are basic, no brainers. You just plug it in. And you can instantly figure out what you do. Just by trial and error, but some games you need the manual for. Yeah. And usually it's those games that people throw the fucking manual away from. So what I'm saying is, the people who... When you buy a new games console or a new game people, sit down on the bus on the way home, read the manual, and when you get, up, when you get home, you can put the disc in and you won't have any problems. Granted, you won't be able to memorise a whole lot. No, well, I can. I can do that. I can read in the books, I can memorise pretty much everything that I need to know. If I forget, I can just go back to it later. Most, most of the... Ice camera, one minute. Yeah, we're on 14.07. So, mo most of the most, granted, most of the time, a manual is used for, as a reference point. Yeah. For example, I've just uh, recently bought a game, Wild Arms. It's an old PS PS1 game. And in the game menu, it doesn't tell you what any of the items do. So you don't you don't really know how to cure a certain status ailment. So you look in the manual, you see uh, paral paralysis. Paralysis cured by heat salve. So you know then that heat salve, you're the paralysis. If you don't have the manual, you'd never figure that out. And uh, on that rant, we'll... Uh, End the part. Yeah, what he said. <laughs>